You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks, we're back with you. Don't forget, you can watch this live on YouTube as we're uh, interviewing this next good-looking feller that has been all over the TV this weekend. John Snyder, good morning. How are you, brother? Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, we're about to freeze to death up here in Hiawassee, Georgia. So how's the, how's the weather down there in Louisiana? Well, we just got home last night from Tennessee, so I'm not uh, – it's actually kind of nice, but I've only been outside for about 30 seconds. <laughs> Man, you have been all over the TV. We're sitting here. Candace Lee's with us this morning. She said she watched a Hallmark uh, movie with you Lifetime. in it. Lifetime. Lifetime. My wife watched one last night. We actually watched the new movie you got out, Stand on it, and not to mention all the racing. Do you ever stop? I mean, is there a stop mode? Do you take time for sleep? <laughs> you know, like they say, I'll stop when I'm dead. Uh, until then, I'm going to have a great time. And by the way, this movie here, Poker Run, just ran away with every record we ever had. I want to thank everybody who rented it from Cineflix. I want to thank, we had, we had one family. Now get this, this is a 48 hour rental and they saw this movie from Friday until Sunday, 17 times. Oh wow. Holy cow. 17 times, yeah. So it's, uh, it's exciting. We have, a, uh, we have a runaway hit on our hands and I'm loving it. And we were at a dirt track. We were racing at the, uh, the 411 dirt track in Seymour, Tennessee, Friday and Saturday night. My wife and I both raced dirt track. Right. There were people watching Poker Run on their phones before they went out on the track. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man, I watched you do the, uh, the uh, you actually sang the national anthem, and, and, man, that was really cool the way you did that. Well, a lot of people, uh, they, they take our national anthem for granted. They don't know what it is. Right. Right. And, and I've been thinking about it a lot, actually, since uh, the last time I did it was Saturday. I, I think that our country's national anthem is the only national anthem in the world that is actually a question. Right. Every other anthem is a statement of power. Ours is a, is a question. Oh, say, can you see, basically, is our flag still up? Does it still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? And I tell people that it's up to us each and every day, every man, woman, and child who calls themselves a citizen of the United States legally right. um, to make sure that the answer to that question remains yes. And it's not something that is just, you don't, uh, you don't get freedom and you don't get peace and then it just sits there like, uh, like, like grandma's preserves on a shelf. Right. Freedom and peace are things that must be maintained and, here's a very important word, kept. Yes. You must keep it, or as we can see, people will take it away from you. And, uh, and I'm not talking about enemies domestic. I'm sorry, for enemies foreign. I'm talking about enemies domestic. And we, we must not be complacent with our peace, with our freedoms, or they, and I think we know who they are. Absolutely. We'll take it away. Mm -hmm. And they're trying hard. And you know, it serves us right. You know, we can't, you can't blame the bad guy for stealing your stuff when you've left your door open and fallen asleep on the neighbor's couch. Well, that's kind of, you know, I do a lot of work with the veterans around this area over here, and, and, and I get to rub shoulders with them and, and hear about back in, you know, when their service in the military and the stuff that they went through. And a lot of people, I don't think, realize the... I, I don't know how you'd say it. Actually, the fear in somebody when they're out there fighting for our freedom that we just kind of give away uh, that they went through for our freedom. I don't think people realize what these guys went through It just and women. Right. You know, and, and I think, that folks, you can – this is a, a gross understatement, but it's like, it's like planning a, a surprise party or planning a gift for somebody, working your butt off to give, give something to somebody that you feel they will love. Right. And when you give it to them, they go, oh, these people have risked their lives. These people's friends have given their lives. Yes. These people have given their limbs. Right. And in many cases, they've given their sanity or any hope for having any sort of normalcy. And I'm not talking about the new normal and all that crap. I'm talking about being a human being. Right. They have given that up for you and for me. And for us to kind of poo-poo that, 
is a is a tremendous disgrace. Yes, it is. So yeah. when the, I tell people when the, any sport, when someone takes a knee, we take a walk. Yeah. We want nothing whatsoever to do with a sport uh, or an organization or a concert promoter or an artist or an act who allows that sort of insubordination and, yes, treason to exist on their watch. But now here's We don't allow it. Think about this. They Th don't allow it at dirt tracks either. You I know, know. They say, look, if you want to take a knee, take it to your truck and get out. Yeah, if you don't take a knee at a dirt track race, it's a good place for somebody to take your uh, <laughs> take your head right? off. And that's, and that's how it should be. That's how it should be. So, you know, personally, I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but I don't mind. I'm, I've been in trouble most Laying of Laying there with life. it, man. We've been kicked out of some pretty nice places. I don't time. know how NASCAR even exists anymore. Right. With the excitement of dirt track, with the patriotism of dirt track, with the sound and smells and dirt <laughs> of dirt track, and with, with NASCAR backing, backing any bit of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. Um, I want I want folks to go back and look and see the history of what happened in the last year and a half with regard to uh, to NASCAR and Bubba Wallace and all this kind of stuff. Just just look at it and then consider again the folks that you are supporting. Now, maybe they've maybe they've seen the error of their ways. I don't know. I'm too busy running dirt track to know. Well, you can look at the stands at NASCAR and see they're about empty. So that ought to tell you something. Well, you know, it's it was America's sport, I do believe. I mean, Dukes of Hazard, we were all about uh, all about wanting to be championship NASCAR racers. That's what the General Lee was, a stock car. Right. But our aspirations were toward NASCAR. Now, uh, uh, dirt track. When we hit the dirt track, and about about fifty minutes into this movie, we come out full bore with a with a uh, a tractor, you know, tractor trailer, the the uh, the, the truck part. Right. And a, an 86 Fiero, mm -hmm. a topless cop car, and my, well, you can't see my car, my, uh, my uh, Hellcat, T-top Hellcat Challenger. Right in the middle of an open wheel modified race, the people go crazy. Right. And it's, it's terrific. You know, th there are more people, I'm going to be very, very uh, broad here. There are more country people than city people. Yeah. Country people do not... Uh, they do not take a poo on our flag. Mm -hmm. They are patriots. They are members of a family and a community, and they appreciate it. They know that without them sticking together, this country will fall apart. And they're not racist. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. They are not. And, and even in the sim most simplistic terms, they are not racist because they realize the importance of community and sticking together, they know everyone in that community is important. There's no racism at the farmer's market. Nope. There's no racism on a dirt road. It doesn't exist. This is a construct of the left city dwellers. Right. Okay. You know, people who live on top of each other are aggravated at each other. And it's like, get out of my hallway. People who live next door to one another are like, hey, I'm, I'm out of milk. Can I borrow a cup of milk? Can I borrow some honey? Uh, we had a bad crop. Can we share yours? You know, it's, it's all about community on a, uh, in a rural area. Yeah. And that's, that's very simplistic. But I'm a guy who is always, I've got more dirt in me uh, than smog. And I always will. Well, that's a good so, thing. I, I don't know how much time we have, but I do want to thank everybody we uh we have a, a, a company <clears throat> we don't deal with netflix we don't deal with any of these people with whom we disagree i don't believe in sleeping with the enemy and and what happened between friday and today we had a, a huge success last year with stand on it the year before with a movie called christmas cars uh but this one this is head and shoulders as far as sales go and as far as uh, comments on Facebook and all that. This this has gone crazy, and I want to thank each and every person out there who's either rented it or, or purchased a DVD uh, because we we true. This is a gift from God. Well, so I will thank tell you, you for the success we've had this weekend. Uh, if you haven't gotten a hold of it yet, get a hold of it for Christmas. I promise you're going to be sorry if you don't, because everybody right now in, in just what is it three days. Mm -hmm. 
uh, at least at dirt, on the dirt and on gravel, is talking not about something Amazon put out, not about Game of Thrones, not about any of this elitist nonsense. They're talking about this movie, okay? So uh, go see what they're talking about. I watched it last night, man. I loved it. I guarantee it. I want to, the blue cop car that you've had in the last movie that went to this movie, I, you know, I wish I had that car. That thing would have to last <laughs> for 40 years. That's one tough rig, no doubt. You know what? What's the amazing thing? That car is about 100 yards from me right now. I could go over there. And I'd probably have to, to boost it with a battery booster. Right. But that thing will start up and run all day. Uh, I, if there's something, <clears throat> something about a Crown Vic, you know, yeah. they are just a, they are a tough as nails car. Ain't no doubt. <laughs> Tell you what, you couldn't do that with a Tesla. No, I'm with you. And I don't like the sound of a Tesla when they're sitting at a red light. They just ain't got that rumble. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I think they've got some recording they can play to make it sound like it's got any sort of, uh, Engine. I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's all about, I'm going to do it with it. It's all about the vroom, vroom. Ah, oh, now you go. Yeah, I grow up. Like I say, dirt's for racing, asphalt's for getting there. You know all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And by the way, in, in the movie you saw in Poker Run, every every single stunt, not in Stand Up, uh, but in Poker Run, every time I'm in that car, it's me. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I jumped it over the lake. I took it on the dirt track, uh, many dirt tracks. We were on about six dirt tracks when we did that. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm in that car the whole time. Uh, some friends of mine drove the, um, our stunt guys and a stunt gal. We actually double, uh, Dion a couple of times with a, a wonderful gal named Katie. Right. And then when, uh, when the Fiero was going around, not just on the dirt track, but anywhere in the movie, because, uh, Mindy came in and she, she can only work for about a week. So she had to go away. So that's actually my wife. That's uh, Alicia, right. who also races dirt track. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the when the Fierro's coming in and sliding sideways, and we do we do this, and then it comes up and and uh, looks like it's going to run into me. That's all Alicia. Talk about the very definition of trust. Yeah. All right, baby. I want you to come at me about forty miles an hour, and then stop just before you run into the car. And by the way, before you hit the car, me. Yeah, you're standing there so, in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there blowing a bubble, right? <laughs> you know, that's part of that's part of the of uh, of uh, uh, a redneck hero, right? I think a hillbilly hero is being so cool under pressure that you can still blow bubbles with your bubble gum. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the things that Burt Reynolds certainly did better than anybody. Oh yeah, um, which is why in this movie I have uh, Dane. He plays uh, uh, Timmy Needham. At some point, he says, listen here, Mr. Bubblegum. So <laughs> I, I just think it's i think it's so great, and I'm so thankful that, and relieved. Yeah. Look, a sale just came in. Somebody just bought four items. They just bought four copies of Poker Run. And, you know, this is the cool thing about the time we live in. Somebody else just did. When, when someone purchases something from our store, right. it pops up on an app. We see it. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you have a standard deal with some distributor out there, uh, I did a movie, uh, actually, I did a movie t 10 years ago called Smothered. Right. That's a horror comedy that I went the conventional way. I raised money for it. I found a distrib distributor and have had a big party the day that, that uh, they took the movie over. It's been now eight years since they put that movie out, and they swear they haven't made a dime. Oh, yeah, I know how that works with... Uh, we put this movie out Friday, and we've made a dime. Well, that's good. And I know it. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't paid for it yet, but I I know exactly when we get to the point where we are dead even, Right. I will know, and then we will throw a party. And you know when I think that's going to be? I think it's going to be later today. Oh, that'd be cool. So in four days, mm -hmm. we will have paid for this movie. So let me ask and you. that's real accounting. And that's that again is the difference between someone who lives on a dirt road in the Dukes of Hazard. We called it country smarts or shuck and jive. I'm right? with you on that. I know all about that. So yeah. Let, let me ask so, you something. We can we go to a break and you hang around and we bring you back <laughs> in after the break? 
You can, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. let's, and let's I take another a, thing in like 20 minutes. Okay, good deal. Let's take a short break, about a three-minute break, uh, John. And all the folks out there listening, you can go to uh, Stephen Phillips at the Morning Dish on YouTube and check out how pretty he is. And we'll be, uh-huh. we'll be right back, John. Hang in there. Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? Hey, 97.7. All righty, folks, we're back with you. We have got John Snyder. Y'all know him as Bo Duke, but he's moved on up to uh, got a new movie out, Poker Run. Go to johnsnyderstudios.com. It's got a link to everything there, no doubt about it. And uh, what are you doing, Packy? I don't know where he went. You still there, John? I'm still here. Yeah, you got me? Yeah, there we got you now. Are. There you go. There you go. Hey, I got to give a shout out here. I've got Gary Chapman all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Just said, y'all. Hey, said, Gary. Said, tell you hello. Hey, Gary, I love your new song. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I ain't no doubt about it. I mean, I mean, uh, what's his name's new song? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, take this jab. The song is, you know, your friend made. Yeah. <laughs> Take this jab and shove it. So anyway, but yeah. exactly. Yeah, you know that's a great. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, follow up. We had a song came out just a couple days before. It's so funny. Great minds think alike. Right. Right. We had a song come out called. Uh, I guess they're out of their minds because they're drinking the Kool Aid. So uh, I mean, a friend of mine put. No, I did it. I put yeah, that song <laughs> Yeah, Johnny Bitcoin or Bitcoin. I can't remember what it is. But Johnny yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you, man. Just, you know, you've got to laugh. You've got to laugh, or we're all going to cry, right? Yeah. I mean, we've got to. Uh, we've got to find some humor in this, but we must not be complacent. We must continue to to uh, meet. We must continue to think together. We must continue to join together, and we must eventually continue to act together uh, so that we can uh, we can get or take, if necessary, our country back. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to do it, man, because, I mean, we're at a point now, and there's still 30-something percent of the people think that the country's going in a good direction. I'd like to know, you know who that these can't are. Be. <laughs> it absolutely can't be. It, I, I, we travel a lot. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I hear that. I hear all that stuff. That is, don't believe that. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely uh, leftist propaganda. Okay. Mm-hmm. I could put, we, we have traveled in the last two years. We pro- I bet I've met half a million people. Okay. Right. And I feel fine. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. You know, I've had it with Dr. Fauci. I can't even reach low enough to touch the top of his miserable head. Yeah. But... <clears throat> I could put all of the Biden-Harris signs I've seen in the last two years in the back of one small pickup truck. Yes, you can. Okay? So don't believe it, folks, because what they are trying to do, and they'll never tell you this, but they are taking the tactics of a an amazing uh, 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 tactic, excuse me, <clears throat> There was a guy named Nathan Bedford Forrest, Mm -hmm. and what Nathan Bedford Forrest was better at than anyone was making the enemy think that he was coming at them with superior numbers and superior force, when in fact, he didn't have very many troops at all. I remember that. Okay? Yep. He was the guy that would have people out there lighting fires to make it look like there was a thousand campfires and ten people at each campfire. He was the guy that would have people ride by and then come back and circle around and ride by again. So do not be disheartened, America. There are not very many. I mean, they are so far inferior in numbers that you can't believe it. So please don't buy into any of this nonsense that there are more of them. The only thing that they have that we don't have is they do have control of the media, the media, mm-hmm. not this media, the big, you know, the big right. media that has somebody else's money to throw away in order to do all their advertising. Believe me when I tell you, you spend money differently when it is yours. Yes, you do. And you appreciate, I tell people that my wife and I are the farmer's market of independent filmmaking. We appreciate it when you buy a watermelon or a stalk of corn right. or a jar of honey from us. Because we know the work we put in to putting that up there on the shelf. Okay? 
So when you when you support what we do, not only do we know it because the phone dings, but we appreciate the hell out of it. Right. Okay. And there are more of us. Uh, a quick story, if I may. Yeah. When, when Dukes of Hazard was on the air, there were three networks. Every Monday morning, uh, or the over well, the overnights would come out on Saturday, and we'd find out. And uh, they represented New York, Chicago, and L.A. Dukes of Hazard got killed. There were 65 shows, and Dukes of Hazard was somewhere like number 60 in the overnights. Right. When the national ratings came out, and I don't believe they came out until Wednesday, so it was a long drag, not like today. So in 1979, when the national ratings came out, which comprised everyone, we were in the top five, and many times number one or number two. Right. It has not changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are far more people who walked to the end of a dirt or gravel road this morning to pick up their mail than there are those who believe that Biden won in November. Right. I can believe that. Okay. Yeah. So don't let their, what did Rush Limbaugh call them? The, uh, the uh, not so silent minority. Mm -hmm. Don't let their control of this little thing we're all watching and all depending on right now. Don't let their skill at manipulating that make you believe that there are more people that think that way. Because it cannot be. Well, I, you know, I, I'm like you. I know a lot of people, and ain't but two of them that I know right now that even thinks that Biden's even close. And, and you can't argue with them because you can't argue. You can't. I mean, don't don't confuse them with their facts because they got their mind made up. That's what my daddy says. Don't confuse them with the facts because they got their mind made up. You know. And it's well, just, I got people that, that, that uh, we have a a motorhome. We we have a motorhome that takes 150 gallons of diesel. Right. Right. And I tell you, it's twice as expensive now than it was a year ago. Yep. And this is a byproduct. I've got people, not very many, but I've got some people. So, oh, well, that's not Biden's fault. What that? What? <laughs> This is what? Explain that to me. Yeah, they can't. They can't. This is yeah. They, but they're they're convinced. But like you say, I've got I've got one friend who who feels that way, and it's a it's a defensive posture. Right. You know, because when when President Trump was president, what we could say was, look, I don't I don't care if you like him or not. I don't care if you think he's mean or whatever you think. Look at the price of gas. Look at unemployment. Yeah. Look at look at employment. Look at our stature with regard to the to the world. Okay. Right. We're laughing so, stock right and now. And they would have to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but he's he's just such a he's mean. Well, give me mean any day. I'm and I'm you. from New York too. We're not mean. We are direct. Why? Because we've got things to do. But I think and about in his this. case, the things to do was run the country. If he and as far as I'm concerned, me at 61 years old, he ran the country better than anyone ever did. And the proof was in the uh, prosperity of the people who live in this country. Do you think the average person could have went through what he went through if he didn't have the <clears throat> posture or the, I mean, honestly? No, there's no way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I knew him years and years ago. And his personality is, and I'm I'm a bit like this, too. The more opposition I face, it's kind of like racing. Right. It's kind of like anything. If you aren't, if people aren't opposing you in some way, then you're probably not very good at whatever it is you're trying to do. Right. Okay. And if people, and biblically speaking, if you are, if you don't meet tremendous opposition, then you are probably not on the right path. So there are those uh, there was a commercial years ago where Tiger Woods and somebody were playing golf before Tiger fell apart. Right. And uh, they were about to take a chip shot onto a, uh, onto, uh, they're about to hit a, uh, a par three and an earthquake happened and all the ground between the tee box and the, and the hole disappeared. And the one guy went, Oh no. And Tiger went, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the difference. Right. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. We don't look for things. Those who will power ahead, right. which is what our country is full of. Right. People who will power ahead in the face of opposition, who welcome opposition. Okay. Right. We will keep this country strong. And they don't realize that. 
because they are people who appreciate a handout. Okay. Oh, yeah. We are people who appreciate a hand up or an opportunity to climb out of the hole ourselves. Well, I'm with you. you. Know, give me a blade of grass I can grab onto and I will pull myself out of this hole right. and be better for having been in it. Yeah. I don't need the government to help me. I just need I need them to get out of my way. I mean, honestly. And I think exactly. if, if the Absolutely. good Lord if the good Absolutely. Lord just needs ten percent, I think that's all the government needs ten percent. I mean, I'm you know, that's kinda of where I'm at. I mean, golly, the government's totally, totally, totally out of control with spending. Well, this government doesn't need anything. You and know, this I, government just prints whatever they want. Why do they need our tax money when they can just go print another trillion dollars? There you go. I'm with you. I mean, seriously, that's yeah. the message they're putting out. And then when I try um, to print hey, money, they let me, me. One more time, i got to be self-serving. Folks, go to johnschneiderstudios.com. Get a hold of a DVD. You can get it plain or autographed or autographed and personalized. It does get a little bit more expensive as you go that way. Or go to cineflixdod.com. Get a hold of this movie that everybody who lives on a dirt road is talking about today. Uh, if you live in a high rise, you'll still like it, but you might have to kind of hide in the corner and watch it yeah. so that your liberal, liberal friends don't see that you like. Boom, boom. But okay. I, I got mine on your app. You've got, you've got an app. Uh, the studio. I do. I have an app. It makes it very easy. That's it's what I John Schneider. Yeah. I, that's what Imagine I, that. And then I can just take my iPad and just mirror it to my smart TV. And we're sitting there cooking, man. We're sitting there. Oh, you're cool. Now you're talking like a 12-year-old. Yeah. Like <laughs> he learning. always talks like a 12-year-old. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> John, man, I don't know. I appreciate you and honestly help you any way we can with this movie. And like I said, y'all need to go to johnsnyderstudios.com. It's got all the stuff you got. And, and you are all over TV this weekend and probably will be from now on out here till Christmas. It's been, it's been so great. And, folks, if you go to stream the movie at Cineflix and it doesn't work the first time, go back. Because what's happened is, is like with Stand On It, only worse, but for us, better. We've had so many people uh, going there to stream the movie uh, that it kind of locks up the, the uh, server or whatever. i got to ask a 12-year-old. Right. But it, it makes it hard. It's hard for a 1,000 people to get the same movie at the same time. Right. So we're working on that. Uh, please don't give up. Just go for it. Um, we're going to make more movies like this. I promise you that we are, we're going to stick to the back roads and the, and the backwaters and the bayous. And we're going to continue to be a, a organization that waves the flag of all things rural. Okay. I and see, all things American. I seen a, at the end of that movie, there's a telltale sign that there's another spinoff movie coming pretty quick. I can tell. You I'm think? pretty smart like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if we can ever help you, man, just let us know. And thank you so much, Thanks, John. John. I sure will. I appreciate it. You all take care. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. There you go. Uh, hang on to those you love. Uh, don't be complacent. A change is not going to happen without you. Right. Okay? Because I heard this last week. The hero you are waiting for is you. So act like one. All right, man. You take care. Thank you so much. Tell, right. you, tell your lovely wife we said good, good acting and appreciate her, too. I certainly will. All you right. take care. Right, Bye, take everybody. Care. Pretty cool. Oh, ain't no doubt, man. He's got I'd, a lot going I'd on. I'd say he needs to go, he needs to run for something. I could do that. If I was good looking like him, I could do that. I could be an actor. You'd be in office. I could be an actor. Oh, I don't you'd want to be in an an office. Actor. I don't be a government. I don't, I haven't tried that route. That. <laughs> I don't know if it had anything to do with your look, Stephen. Uh, it does for acting. You got to look. I mean, I got the Jack Nicholson look instead of the, anyway. Yeah. Folks, y'all go to johnsnyderstudio.com. Check that out. And then don't forget, take a jab.com uh, with uh, Gary Chapman and check out that song he's got. And uh, tomorrow we will be back and with another cool interview. Don't forget, we uh, ask that you subscribe to our channel. We're trying to build it up all we can to try to get better interviews. And I don't know how you're going to get any better than what we've had so far, but uh, we have people calling. And we do appreciate you, no doubt about it. And uh, that being said, Packy, I guess that's it, eh, Bob? Yep, you got it. All right, y'all take care. Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? Hey, 97.7.